Now, in this lecture, I want to talk about a very interesting concept called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Now, this principle comes from quantum mechanics, and two experiments in quantum mechanics help define this principle. The first experiment, which we'll talk about in great detail in another lecture, was called the photoelectric experiment, or simply the photoelectric effect. And this experiment was conducted by Einstein. And what Einstein showed was that light, an electromagnetic phenomenon, had both particle-like properties as well as wave-like properties. In other words, light has the following property called wave-particle duality. And what this property shows or tells us is that whenever it's convenient, light can act as a wave. And whenever it's convenient, light will act as a particle. Now, following this experiment, another experiment was conducted, known as the Broglie experiment. And what that experiment showed was that not only light has this property, but other subatomic particles, like electrons, also have this duality property, or the, or the wave-particle duality property. Now, these two experiments led directly to the following result, the uncertainty principle, or the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, named after the guy who came up with the principle Heisenberg. Now, uh, what, what this principle showed was that it showed that as you move downward in size from something large to the subatomic level, the less your objects act like particles and the more they act as a wave. In other words, as you get down to the subatomic level, to the electrons and protons and neutrons, the less your objects act as solid spheres and the more your objects act as waves. Now to demonstrate what this uncertainty principle states, I'll use the following example. Suppose I have this relatively large ball, which from where you're sitting, you can probably tell where the ball is and you can tell the ball isn't moving, so you can tell its velocity. Now suppose I go smaller, suppose I hold up this ball. Now once again, this is a relatively large ball, and from where you're sitting, you could probably tell that the ball isn't moving, and you could tell where the ball is. Now suppose I go even smaller. Suppose I go down to this really tiny marble, which you probably can't see from where you're sitting, but I'll move it closer. Uh, there's my particle, there's my solid sphere. Now. Now that you saw the sphere, you could probably see that, you know, you could probably see it from where you're sitting. But suppose now I walk a mile away or a kilometer away, and suppose I hold this ball now. Now this ball becomes a speck. You could still see it, but it's much, much smaller. Now suppose I walk a mile away and I hold this ball up. Now this ball, you probably won't see really well. You might see it if you have really good vision but I don't think I'll see it a mile away. Now, suppose I hold this really tiny marble, the solid sphere, from a mile away. You definitely won't see this one, right? So in other words, the smaller you go, the less you see its position and the less you see its velocity. If I walk five miles away and I hold either of these balls, you won't see any ball. And you, can't, and you won't be able to tell where the ball is and with what speed or with what velocity it's moving. The point is, and what this uncertainty principle showed, is that as you shrink down to the atom and then to the subatom, to the electron, you no longer are dealing with solid spheres. They are no longer solid spheres and they act more as waves. In other words, they have both wave-like properties and solid properties. And that means because elementary particles are no longer solid spheres, there's no way to know its position and at the same time its velocity with complete certainty. So the formula or the equation for this uncertainty principle is the following. Planck's constant, a very very small number, divided by 2 is always less than our change in x or the uncertainty of our position, change in position, times mass times change in velocity. Now remember, mass times velocity is momentum. So this guy is change in momentum. In other words, this is the uncertainty of our position, and this is the uncertainty of our momentum, or velocity. And what this equation basically says is the following. The less our change in x is, 
if this guy is very small, that means we know more information about our position, where our electron is located. And that means if this guy decreases, and this is a constant, this guy must increase. The smaller our change in x is, the more we know about our position, the greater our change in v is, the less we know about our velocity. And likewise, the same holds. The more we know about our velocity, change in velocity, the less our change in velocity is, and the less we know about our change in x, the less we know about our position. In other words, we can't be very certain about our position, and at the same time, about our velocity. That's what the uncertainty principle tells us. And this has to do with the duality nature of subatomic particles, electrons and protons, as well as the duality of light. In other words, when you go from a large ball, from this ball, to a subatomic particle, our particle loses its solid sphere-like properties. It stops acting like a solid sphere and starts acting more like a wave. And therefore, we can no longer pinpoint exactly where our object is and at the same time what its velocity is, what its momentum. The last thing I want to mention is the following. This principle has nothing to do with how inaccurate or how accurate our instrument is or how inaccurate or accurate our methods or experimental methods are. In other words, even if we had the perfect instrument and our methods were the perfect methods, we still would not be able to pinpoint exactly where our object is, our electron is, and exactly with what velocity and in which direction our electron is traveling. This has nothing, this principle has nothing to do with our instruments. It is completely a byproduct of the nature of electrons, of the fact that electrons move as particles and at the same time they move as waves.